are happy to introduce to you uh, the мы очень рады представить вам, извините, нашего очередного гостя. Это один из членов жюри, сэр Клайв Гилленсон. Он одновременно является виолончелистом и, что не менее важно в нашем контексте, исполнительным и художественным руководителем Карнеги Холла, что в Нью-Йорке. Сэр Клайв Гилленсон учился в Королевской академии музыки в Лондоне. С 70-го года он играл в Лондонском симфоническом оркестре, после чего стал его управляющим директором. А с 2005 года, то есть уже 10 лет, он является художественным и исполнительным директором Карнеги Холла. И мы очень рады видеть его у нас в гостях. Please come. We have someone waiting in the wings for us. It's one of our jury members. Hello, Hello. nice Hello. to meet you. Please yes. come in. Nice we say, you. sir, Hello. we say, sir, Clive Gillison. We say Clive, please. Just Clive, okay. <laughs> okay. That was a big question that we never, okay. it was a mystery, but now we know. Clive yeah. Gillison, cellist and both executive and artistic director of Carnegie Hall in New York. He studied at the Royal Academy of Music in London. He, in 1970, he began performing with the London Symphony Orchestra and from 1984 to 2005 was its managing director. In 2005, he took charge of Carnegie Hall. You have to really take charge of that place, I'm sure. <laughs> Two years later, Carnegie Hall staged its first international festival and subsequently two citywide New York festivals. Thank you, Clive, for being with us today on Medici TV. I'm thrilled to be with you. Very Thanks. good. Um, I just want to, there are so many competitions in the world and all these incredible musicians, but what is specific to you about the Tchaikovsky competition? Well, I think in the end, the, the value of any competition is you've got to attract the very best players in the world. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then it's never going to be an, an important competition. So the great thing about the Tchaikovsky is partly it has history on its side. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always been a great competition, right. so everybody's always wanted to go in for it. I think as well what Valery Gergiev has done with it in, in recent years as well, mm -hmm. um, you know, putting it absolutely center stage around the world, giving huge opportunities to mm -hmm. the people who come in. It makes it more and more irresistible for the best players to come in, and that's the key to everything. Do, do you agree that the uh, recent competition, this competition, uh, preliminary uh, selection system uh, really brought uh, the good fruits? I mean. Uh, Comparing to the previous one, where when you also all, also was a jury member, well, uh, all I can say is that the standards overall are incredible. I mean, if I think back, you know, cello playing maybe 20, 30 years ago, you would never dream you'd have That's true. this That's many totally extraordinary wow. cellists, and so. You know, one used to be far more aware of technical challenges of the cello. It's a very difficult instrument. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I hate about these people is they all make it sound as though it's easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. Though, that's true. To, to me, actually, because I'm also a cellist, uh, the only place when I found instantly that, okay, now I see these guys really play cello, the, the same, uh, it's now with the orchestra, because uh, uh, the, during the first round and half of the first half of the second, was the impression that they just play in other instruments. Not, nothing is different. Everything is there. So that's and really nice. You can't really there. comment on but the let, play. Let me just, let no, me just, just, yeah. <laughs> just translate something uh, for our Russian audience. We are discussing with Clive те большие изменения в лучшую сторону, которые произошли за последние, как он сказал, 30 лет с уровнем исполнительского мастерства на виолончели, потому что он говорит, это безумно сложный инструмент для исполнения, и 30 лет назад никто не мог мечтать о таком выдающемся уровне исполнения, который проявляют наши конкурсанты уже начиная с первого тура. You have a, uh, Clive, you have a long history with Medici TV, because um, it was the first uh, time that there was live streaming on uh, internet from Carnegie Hall, and you were a partner in that, I think. Absolutely, yes. Well, it's something we dreamed of doing for a long time. Um, we started conversations with Medici TV years and years and years ago. Mm -hmm. There were a number of issues in terms of addressing costs, which were the reason we were held up. Um, but now we've got the agreements that we needed, and it's very much part of our future. And we think they've been real pioneers, so we're thrilled to be partners with them. We're so happy because they know that how many people are being able to participate in this as we are just sitting here lucky, but it's amazing how far-reaching this is going to be for everyone. Well, what I find astounding is 
a competition like this, if you think back, of, you know, not that long ago, yeah, maybe would have been 15, available. Yeah, yeah, would have been available largely to the people in the concert hall. Now I understand it's something like three and a half million people have That's already um, connected with this That's and amazing. been able to listen. Many TV. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's the whole thing that you know it's the beginning of a lot of very important careers mm -hmm. and for people to feel they can share that and be part of it and actually have had a sight of the you know these brilliant young people before they're well known mm -hmm. um, but it means then you know you're part of the adventure and part exactly. of the journey мы обсуждаем тот факт что с помощью медиа TV и Карнеги Холла была организована... How long ago was it? The, the I first didn't say when was the first broadcast in Carnegie Hall. I think it was only last season. It was last um, season. Yeah. 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 Just every year. Yeah. Uh, and what was broadcasted actually? Well, we've broadcast several concerts. Ah, I see. То есть трансляция нескольких концертов была организована в прямом эфире из Карнеги Холла при помощи Медичи ТВ и все очень рады констатировать тот факт, что современные средства массовой информации и интернет в частности позволяют действительно дать доступ к лучшим концертам в лучших залах мира, одним из которых, конечно, является Карнеги Холл. Очень большому количеству человек, Клайв Гиллинсон говорил о том, что uh, three and a half million people, you said, right? Now, t that we're it's watching this. today. Ah, and, uh, this. And for, for do you know any TV. statistics about, about your live broadcasting from Carnegie Hall? Well, we've had many figures, and it, it sounds as though it's anything between quarter of a million and half a million people per... Each you know, performance. For every each performance, concert. each concert. То есть аудитория Карнеги Холла расширилась до от четверти до половины миллиона людей каждый раз, когда эти трансляции организованы. Не то, что у нас на Медичи ТВ и конкурсе Чайковского, когда нас смотрят, посмотрел уже три с половиной, по слухам, миллиона человек. В любом случае, это замечательный э, прорыв в области высоких технологий и музыки. And by the same token, Clive, you were, at, uh, you were performing cellist at London Symphony Orchestra from 1970. You've been involved with them uh, up until 2007, managing director. Um, and one of the LSO was one of the first orchestras to start a label promoting their own work digitally, which was a very important step for, I think, also for the classical music world. It was huge. And it was something, again, it took me many years from when I wanted to do it till mm -hmm. we were able to do it, because there were various union issues and, mm -hmm. and so on to actually work through. Um, but the fact is, we did start it, and we've recorded a lot of the things that are... I mean, the Berlioz cycle with Sir Colin Davis, a lot of um, Shostakovich with Slava Rostropovich. We did some things that are genuinely historic. And not to be able to capture yes. some of the most important musical moments, for them just to be something that exists and then is gone after the performance, is a tragedy. Exactly. So we felt that was of fundamental importance to the future of music. It's a wonderful so, label. I, I so actually, it started well before the digital air... Uh, the, the LSO uh, label, it, it's, a, it's a label. I know, no, no, no. I mean, oh, when you, because you said that uh, uh, they started make, making it digitally because, you know, there is an opinion that digital recording, they kind of killed classical music because of the uh, limited quality, limited uh, abilities of this, comparing to the uh, analog one. I, so that's we, another, I agree, that's a, but... That's, that's a different it's discussion. A, it's, a, it's, another, it's an <laughs> argument that we could talk about, mm -hmm. um, but I think the fact is that um, I, I agree. I mean, I was born in the analog age, but <laughs> I think the fact that we can reach out maybe to that's more the, people through yeah. digital. I mean, that was the important thing. I mean, the, there's going to be always lots of platforms. There'll be different techniques for capturing content. But in the end, the most important thing was to be capturing the content yeah, true, and absolutely. sharing it. And until the point when we started doing it, essentially orchestras were dependent on recording companies, and recording companies decided what they wanted to record. By creating our own record label, we decided which are the most important things we want to share, and Great. that's the most important Great. things we do. So that was the real change, and where, in the end, you have ownership over what it is that you're sharing yeah. worldwide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, Great. Uh, речь идет о том, что в свое время uh, Лондонский симфонический оркестр первым в мире uh, занялся, ну, организовал свой собственный лейбл, uh, под которым uh, выпускал разные записи, и это было очень важно, как отмечает Клав, Клав Гиллинсон, потому что обычно по, в условиях полной зависимости от фирм грамзаписи музыканты существуют и записывают, выпускают то, что нужно фирм грамзаписи. А были такие замечательные выступления с великими музыкантами, ну, все понимаете, Лондонский симфонический оркестр, что они не могли упустить случая все это записать, и для этого создали свою собственную фирму, которая потом, к тому же, стала еще и с финансовой точки зрения их. 
Um, just to say one very quick one more, thing, please. as far as I remember, we started it in 1990. Mm. Oh, so wow. it's been going a long, long time. 1990? So I think it was something... So it's now 25 years, right? Yes, I think it was about... LSO 90. digitally... Well, oh, no, maybe actually, the no, label. it was 2000. Sorry, right. 2000. 2000 because so it's 15 years exactly. old. Exactly. So it's it's been going a long time. It's now it's absolutely established great. and it's the leading... Um, um, record label in the world that is an orchestra own own record <laughs> label. So I've got to get that. You have to LSO label. Do you want to? Клайв Гиннесон сказал, что организовано был этот лейбл в 2000 году и уже 15 лет он существует и, как я понял, неплохо себя чувствует в финансовом смысле, что опровергает мысль о том, что продажи контента музыкального умерли и Фирмы Грабзай все какое-то время вынуждены были существовать исключительно, исключительно переиздавая трех теноров многочисленными тиражами. Нет. То, что делает Лондонский симфонический оркестр, по-прежнему привлекает внимание публики. Um, uh, Carnegie Hall. Oh my God. I mean, I remember the first time I went with my parents, and it's just one of the most famous halls in the world. Um, you're from London. You're from you're, uh, Britain. Yeah. How, why does it have this aura? What is different about uh, Carnegie Hall? And maybe you, how do you compare it to European or uh, Russian uh, great halls? Is that a tough question? Well, in, in terms of <laughs> acoustics. <laughs> yeah. like acoustics and whatever. But yeah. There's a lot of issues. Um, I mean, one is it is a pure piece of magic. It was created. Um, the, the Andrew Carnegie's wife sang in a chorus. There was no concert hall, so as you do, she asked her husband to build a concert hall, um, and he did. Sounds like um, Citizen Kane. Yes, <laughs> and you know they didn't go to somebody who'd built a concert hall before or knew anything about building concert halls. They went to a guy who was the treasurer of the Choral Society, in which she sang, and he went around Europe at Andrew Carnegie Hitt's behest, looked at all the greatest concert halls, came back, designed something that bore no relationship to anything he'd seen, and built the greatest concert hall in the world. So there's something quite magical about that. The treasurer so, of this chorus uh, society. He was just the treasurer of the chorus society. Um, but it, he built the greatest concert hall in the world. Tchaikovsky came to open it. Um, so being Andrew Carnegie, he had to get the best. Tchaikovsky was the most famous musician in the world at that time. So he brought him over, and really since that day, it's been the primary destination for every great musician. And it's partly because it's, I think, the, you know, certainly was then the greatest concert hall in the world. There's no greater one today. I mean, there's a, there are a number of great mm -hmm. concert halls, mm -hmm. but nothing better. Um, and it was in New York when you, America was becoming such a central in, part of the world the as well. Yeah, Absolutely. So, so it was, you know, the mo right moment in history mm -hmm. as well. Only in New York, right? So you felt really being really responsible when, when, when you when you went there when you took this position because you know even the first one who was in charge with this whole really showed the great results. So, we, well, I mean it's a huge responsibility, and I mean to be honest, I was very happy well, I can't with really, my own I job. No, I was very happy with my own job in ah, Britain. I, I wasn't looking for another job, mm -hmm. but this is the only job where you cannot say no. Yes, as far as I'm concerned, music. You know, it they is made just, you an offer you uh, couldn't refuse. Well, it, <laughs> just, 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 which is Carnegie Hall. Let uh, me just uh, briefly translate. Вопрос о Карнеги Холле, о том, что это один из самых знаменитых залов мира, и чем он отличается от других замечательных залов, и Клайв Гиннисон рассказал историю, из которой следует, что жена Карнеги пела, как я понимаю, в хоре, и как-то не было, такая простая бытовая история, не было особенного места, где можно было выступить, и Карнеги решил построить такой зал, и они обратились к казначею вот этого хорового общества, где, где пела его жена, очень толковым, очевидно, человек, который поехал в Европу, посмотрел, какие бывают залы, установил нужные связи, Построил лучший зал в мире, на его открытие пригласил Петра Ильича Чайковского, уже на тот момент э, самого известного музыканта в мире. И, в общем-то, вот с тех пор слава Карнеги Холла, она действительно не ослабевает. И когда я спросил, что, наверное, было страшно стать, ну, тоже страшно, безумно ответственно, э, стать художественным и управляющим э, исполнительным директором этого места, э, Клайв Геннисон ответил, что он был очень счастлив на предыдущей своей работе в ЛСО, и это было единственное предложение, которые могло как-то его отвлечь от предыдущей работы и от которой невозможно было отказаться. You've created two uh, festivals in New York, uh, classical well, many, and many, many, many festivals. Many. Yeah. And how do you, what, what is the mark you want to put on them? Because there are many festivals all over the world and each one has to have its own personality. Uh, what, what is your goal? 
Well, what we really want to do is create journeys of exploration and discovery for our audiences. Mm -hmm. So when we create a festival, we go and work with many of the greatest organizations in the city, literature, film, dance, theater, mm -hmm. um, and we put together a journey of exploration around a subject. And each subject is is different. We don't do countries necessarily. We, mm -hmm. You know, there is, there's no pre-planned thing. We just do the things we're fascinated by. So the last one was South Africa, but we've done African-American music, we've done Leonard Bernstein, we've done Berlin, Vienna, China, Japan. So we've done a, uh, Latin America, we've done a lot of very different things. But all of them are explorations across the entire spectrum of, the, of culture and the arts. Wow. But is it you who inspire these different festivals and, and so on, or you just consider different, uh, well, ideas and offers that come, people come to you with? Well, we develop a concept that mm -hmm. we want to do. Then we go out and speak to mm -hmm. the organizations we think are the right partners. You know, be it MoMA or Guggenheim mm -hmm. or, you know, the Metropolitan Museum. We talk to everybody who we think are the right partners for the particular project. And it's different partners for each project. Um, and then we develop ideas with them. So we are responsible for the, the entire picture and the journey. Um, but we're really looking to other people to make a contribution which is complementary mm -hmm. to the music side. Клайв Генисон рассказывает о тех фестивалях, которые он делает, многочисленные. У нас в наших материалах упомянуты два, но на самом деле Карнеги Холл ведет постоянную работу по организации всевозможных, всевозможных фестивалей. Я так понял, что функционирует это таким образом, что есть некая воодушевляющая сила в лице, в частности, Клайва Гиллинсона, которая задумывает проекты, после чего они обращаются ко всевозможным партнерам и любым музеям Гугенхайма, МОМА и так далее, были перечислены Нью-Йорк, которые в состоянии помочь в реализации этих задумок, после чего проект воплощается, и это очень интересная работа. Competition and maybe the most uncomfortable thing about it. Um, I think one of the hardest things, without a doubt, is the responsibility, because in the end, I mean, these are mm. everybody's life and everybody's career. So it's a huge responsibility. So you know, you cannot let go for a second. But the thrill is to be there at the birth of careers and and to be there and seeing fantastic young players, to be seeing, you know, as well you know, how much better they are than, you know, the people were when I was a, a young player. I mean, they are you, extraordinary. You, you're the first one to tell this true. Say that you're, they're better than you were. Yes, yes, <laughs> because, because, you know, He's when modest. he possesses the Carnegie Hall, uh, on, all the rest, they just, uh, well, they, they play cello. <laughs> because, uh, not really, just play cello. You know, <laughs> not just, of course. Because, you know, during mm. the first round, I thought, okay, I know all the great musicians and so but they, slowly has have to feel envy for this guest because they are the young ones who, who are going to compete to them mm. and pretty soon so and what's the what's the what's the more uncomfortable thing just saying some people have to leave and some people have to stay i think it's just very difficult to say you know when you hear somebody who's fantastic but they still may only be the second or third or fourth best. Right. You know, and that is hard because, it. you know, it's an entire lifetime of work. It's all the aspirations. Um, and you feel, I mean, it doesn't mean it's the end of the journey because lots of people not. who have not won competitions have built great careers. You don't have to win a competition to build a great career. Mm. But nonetheless, it's a key turning point in somebody's life. And as a director of, of, of Carnegie Hall, would you say that for you it really matters whether uh, someone gets gets the first press or second or third when you really think that third one is just marvelous i just need to ha have him or her uh, is it that important that he's a gold medal winner or the bronze no when when it comes That's to who we choose as young musicians we're going to present we don't choose on the basis of medals I mean, you know, we will only ever listen to who we want that's, to present. That's what I wanted um, uh, these guys to, to, yeah. to hear. As so it, as at the end of the day, yeah. <laughs> Look, it's fantastic. I mean, they, you know, there'll be huge advantages to the winner because they of get course. so many great concerts. But the reality is we will always choose the people we feel we want to represent and the artists we want to have at Carnegie Hall. Okay, thanks. Quick, do you want to translate and we should I let Clive go? I desperately want to, like, yeah. 
as yeah. we all, we, we, we all, you can tell we all need a shower. But uh, anyway, thank you so much, well, Clive, pleasure. for coming. Thank you very much, And uh, we'll thank see you. you in the next yeah. few Thanks. days. Definitely. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Дорогие друзья, я немножко переведу то, о чем говорил Клайв Гиллинсон в конце, потому что э, я задал ему вопрос о том, поскольку Вали до этого спросила, что важнее всего, что труднее всего и что лучше всего в работе жюри, он говорит о том, что, как и, в общем-то, многие его предшественники, что фактически ты распоряжаешься чьей-то жизнью, карьерой и так далее, и очень трудно, когда ты действительно думаешь, что кто-то потрясающе играет, но по условно говоря, по очкам он оказывается или она на, на третьем месте и так далее, то это трудно осознавать. Тогда я спросил, насколько для зала, поскольку он представляет все-таки концертную организацию, насколько для зала важен тот факт, является ли тот или иной музыкант обладателем именно первой премии или третьей. И ответ был э, такой, что не по премиям зовут в Карнеги Холл, и поэтому я, собственно, надеялся это услышать, потому что, конечно, мы оказываемся с вами в и окажемся в ближайшие дни со все меньшим и меньшим количеством участников конкурса. И мне кажется, это мысль со стороны директора Карнеги Холла о том, что если ты достаточно яркий, интересный, и исполнитель захватил действительно внимание кого-то среди членов жюри или тех, кто смотрит нас на Медичи ТВ, это все равно хорошо, это все равно очень важно. Вот, собственно, что мне кажется важно услышать. So, I think we have some, um, it's our... Daily Gazette, it's a La Gazette.